Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Embracing Change, Tips and Tricks We Learned Through COVID-19 to Carry With Us. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. You have joined the presentation using your computer speaker system by default for audio. If you would prefer to join over the telephone, just select phone in the audio pane in your attendee control panel to the right of your screen and the dial in information will be displayed. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenters by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation and they will be answered via email afterwards. Today's webinar is being recorded and you will receive a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours with a link to view the recording. Our two speakers today will be John Prenderville and myself, Erin Nelligan. JP he is one of our technical account managers and is part of our engineering team. I am our social media marketing manager. Uh, JP is going to be our first speaker today, so uh, take it away, JP. Thanks, Aaron. Hello, everyone. So COVID-19 has led to a huge spike in working from home, in some cases with little or no preparation. Uh, it's very important to ensure that your remote access solution is secure, reliable, and easy to use for your workforce. So one remote access solution that many of you are probably familiar with is VPN, or Virtual Private Network. Uh, it's a common way of accessing on-premise or cloud resources in your environment securely. Um, in some cases, it's used in conjunction with solution like RDP, so you can log directly into your office desktop. Um, in some cases, it's just used with driver folder mapping, so you can gain access to data within your environment. Um, another remote access solution, common one would be Citrix. Uh, Citrix uh, provides a web front end for deploying apps and remote desktop resources to your workforce that they can then access right within their web browser very easily. So another component of uh, working from home is cloud resources, hosted resources specifically like Office 365 and G Suite. Um, these are accessible via the web from anywhere. That said, it's important to ensure that these resources are also properly secured. Strong password policies and multi-factor authentication are essential to ensuring the security of your chosen cloud platforms. And we're going to get into a little bit more of that right now. So when it comes to password policies, you know, everybody hates having to remember 97 different passwords to get into everything that you need to. So single sign-on is a great way to combat that. Uh, whether it be any of the solutions just mentioned, VPN, RDP, Citrix, single sign-on and multi-factor authentication should be in place. Um, single sign-on allows users to use a centralized set of credentials, usually tied to on-premise Active Directory or Azure, Azure Active Directory, to sign into multiple services. So this is a huge step in helping users practice better password hygiene simply by reducing the number of different service credentials they need to manage and remember. So multi-factor authentication, this adds an additional layer of login verification. Often this would be tied to a device like a cell phone, which would then prompt a user uh, via an app or SMS to confirm their identity when signing into a service like Office 365, VPN, any of the aforementioned services. Uh, one common example of two-factor authentication uh, outside of the IT world is using an ATM. So when you think about it, it requires a bank card, which is something you have, and a PIN, which is something you know. That would be a classic example of multi-factor authentication in everyday life. So malicious attacks and schemes like phishing and spoofing can't just be prevented through antivirus solutions alone. Uh, with most employees working from home these days, more endpoints than ever are actually outside the perimeter of your on-premises network, which is protected by a hardware firewall. Very few home networks have the same level of protection that corporate networks behind a firewall do. So to ensure that your company has visibility into your network and maintains control, our EPP solution provides a real-time monitoring of vulnerabilities and attacks so you can stop them before an attack can hit. It's a really great additional security step to take today, especially when assets are dispersed all over the place and decentralized. So in addition to all these security measures, you know, Classic spam and directed phishing attacks are at an all-time high right now in recent months. With everybody being separate out of the office, it's just targets are easier to hit and aren't expecting things, aren't able to turn to your coworker next to you to say, hey, does this email look legitimate to you? So these attacks are all on the up uh, right now. 
Um, it's critical to have a security awareness training program in place that will ensure that your employees are properly trained and evaluated on an ongoing basis on threats that are out there. And with that, I will hand it back to you, Aaron. Okay, so COVID-19 hacking. Uh, based on a lot of the research I've done for social media, it seems like due to the fact that a huge percentage of people are now working remotely. Hackers are taking advantage to, uh, advantage of that. So, according to Threat Post, digital attackers ramped up their activity over Q1 2020 to the extent that they were sending approximately 1.5 million coronavirus-themed attack emails by the middle of April. Um, along with that, it seems like a, a lot of healthcare facilities have been targeted, and a lot of research facilities that are attempting to find a treatment or a cure for COVID. Um, so now we're going to get into video conferencing. Um, anybody working from home knows that video conferencing has become such a huge element of work now because uh, we're, we're all separated. Uh, so the social aspect of work has kind of switched over to video. Um, so hackers have taken advantage of this. They can see that more people are using video conferencing software. Um, so they have chosen to exact, uh, to attack Zoom, which is one of the biggest applications. So Zoom bombing is now something you should be aware of. Um, uh, hackers have been gaining access to meetings. And uh, when this happens, they can access any sensitive information that was discussed during this meeting, any, fi any files that are sensitive that were shared during the meeting. Um, so it makes you and your organization extremely vulnerable. Um, but there are some security measures you can take. Uh, first, it's important not to make your meetings public. Um, make your meetings private. You can require a password for anybody that is attending the meeting to get into the waiting room, and that way you can filter out any names or numbers that you do not recognize before getting the meeting going. Um, along with that, make sure anybody that has access to the meeting link does not provide this link on any of their personal social media accounts. They need to keep that uh, that link private, as private as you want the meeting. Um, along with that, you, it is extremely important to manage screen sharing options. Let's say hypothetically you are Zoom bombed, um, that hacker could share, could share anything, anything and everything, and then your Zoom meeting is ruined because uh, inappropriate material was displayed on the screen for all to see. Um, and lastly, when it comes to security, and this is just a general note, always make sure you have the most updated version of your software, your conferencing software, any software you're using. It's just a great security measure to take in general. Um, along with that, this video conferencing has been a wonderful way to keep your company culture alive. Uh, us, for example, TNS, we have been holding um, happy hours, virtual happy hours every Friday night. They've been really great. They're so much fun. Um, JP actually has spearheaded like a uh an after party uh, through our um, through our team's platform that we've actually been uh, having a lot of fun on, right, JP? That is true, yes. Guilty as charged. Yeah, it is called The Last Saloon, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, so no, 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 the next, the next saloon. The next, the next uh, saloon, I apologize. Um, TNS. It's been it's been so much fun. So this uh, this next photo is a picture of all of us during one of our happy hours. Um, as you can see, everybody is smiling. It really has been a wonderful experience to kind of share our screens, see each other's faces, share eye contact. I mean, everyone's been so isolated. So this has been a great uh, form of socializing. It, it seems to be the new norm, the new reality. Um, yeah, it really has been a lot of fun. And I actually got the idea and suggested it because of one of our clients I found out was doing it after I had set them up on Microsoft Teams. So it seemed like a good idea. Yeah, it seems like a lot of companies are doing it. And I think it's a great way to uh, raise morale and keep everyone connected. You know, when we all go back into the office, I don't want us all feeling like, you know, like we don't know what's going on in each other's lives anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this next part, we're going to get into a little bit of etiquette. Um, so setup. Setup is extremely important. It, it, it's just, it's the little things that matter when it comes to a video conferencing call. Um, I know personally, I have a Mac. So whenever I set up for a video conference call, I like to use Photo Booth just to check what I look like, 
what parts of my outfit people can see, what the lighting's like. Um, uh, if it's a business meeting, it's really important that you keep things professional. So always business on the top. And if you want to go comfy on the bottom, there's no problem with that. Um, I picked this picture for the slide specifically because I think he's a perfect example of like how we're all dressing right now. You know, I'll always wear a dress top on top, but I, I will admit that I have taken Zoom calls in pajama pants before. So I will admit that. Um, I would also suggest trying not to take your Zoom calls from bed if they are extra important or extra professional. Um, this doesn't apply to every meeting. Um, along with that, not everybody has the best possible setup to make for all of these um, elements, but try not to take your Zoom calls from bed. It can be a little off-putting to see a headboard, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> a little bit. So. Um, and lastly, I think it's just nice to try to use a room that is much that has as much natural light as possible. Um, and if you're backlit, just know that you might end up just looking like a blob. Um, so that is that is one thing to be aware of. Make sure you're more lit in the front with natural light rather than being back, backlit, even if it's with a natural light in a window. Um, and there's nothing wrong with doing a test run. Uh, there are a lot of technical elements that go into making a video call work. I personally am not techie. I am part of the marketing department. I am really lucky that I have a wonderful team of a bunch of IT guys that are always willing to help me. But I mean, if I am setting up for a video call, and it's five minutes before the call and I realize that my audio isn't working, I might have to do a full restart and then I end up being 10 minutes late for a meeting with an important client, you know? So doing a test run 30 minutes beforehand, if you have the time, allows you to enter the meeting in the best possible way, you know, setting yourself up for success um, and no technical issues and no tardiness. So that is why it is best to do a test run. And just to jump in there for one second, Aaron, just some common issues. A lot of these applications allow you to customize your audio and video settings, Teams and Zoom both in particular. Um, once you customize those, they can basically be controlled outside of your Windows audio settings. So just be mindful of that, that often you can look in Windows and say, hey, my mic settings are all correct. But if you go into the actual application you're trying to use, it may be using custom settings. So just one thing to be aware of in terms of common issues. Okay, good to know. Um, and I think for etiquette, one of one of the most important things is to always be respectful. You know, this is a weird new time where we're all communicating either over phone or through video. So make sure that if you are recording a meeting or you are taking a screenshot or a photo that everybody in the meeting or whoever you're speaking to is aware of this. Not everybody wants their picture taken. Not a, like I mean, it, it's inappropriate to record a meeting if people don't know that their words are being recorded. So it's important to just always be respectful in general. Uh, it's an important side note. And finally, when it comes to etiquette, uh, like always have a host you know we have a company call every wednesday and we have a host who uh not only drives the meeting and makes sure that we're organized and staying on target but they stick around until the end they make sure that everybody um has left the meeting before before they have left um so hosts are important they just they keep things organized and we're lucky enough to have one of those for our personal company calls um and even for our happy hours they get things set up for us um all right so now i think this applies to everybody um it's a common frustration i don't know if jp wants to talk about his cats <laughs> and and sharing his office space with his cats yeah they don't care if i'm on a zoom call if they want to be fed they're just going to start meowing relentlessly at me so that that's one thing i haven't been able to teach them much etiquette to this point sadly but still working on it looks like i'm still gonna have a few more weeks <laughs> Um, and I know personally, I am living in a house right now with very thin walls and a lot of people. So I think communicating is so important. Make sure that your roommates or your family that you're staying with have an awareness of when your Zoom calls are, when your conference calls are, and where you're going to be taking them from. That way they can be aware of your space and be aware of uh, the volume of their voices. So I think that's just going to make for a more successful work day in general. Uh, no one wants to be interrupted during a call, right? JB? No. No, Definitely never. <laughs> um, okay, so now into the fun part. I don't know what you guys have been doing to keep yourselves busy, but 
we've been taking a poll about what uh, people have been binge watching. We've been taking a company poll. So uh, it seems like Tiger King is the winner. Not for me. I know. JP, I think, is the only person in America who has not uh, binge watched Tiger King. Yeah, there's still at least a dozen of us out there. Uh, all right. I, I respect that. Um, so if you like comedy, I suggest Middle Ditch and Schwartz. It's, uh, and if you like John Ralphio from Parks and Rec, who was a very popular character, I would suggest watching it. It's improv comedy and it's really funny. Um, another comedy is Schitt's Creek, very popular. Um, Borderlands 3, if uh, you're not caught, if you're, uh, if you're trying to get caught up and you'd like some drama. Uh, and finally, Outer Banks, which is about a treasure hunt. So if you're into a little bit of mystery and things like that, um, I don't know if you have any personal suggestions, JP. I'm an HBO guy, so I, I binged Succession when this thing started, which was great. And mm -hmm. then I, um, the new season of Westworld actually just finished, but that basically started at the beginning of quarantine and just ended. So I, uh, I think it was one of the weaker seasons, but I still enjoyed it. Those were my okay. two big binges. All right. Um, and then there's always Old Reliable. I'm sure a lot of the viewers, the listeners, have seen The Office, uh, have seen Parks and Rec, have seen Stranger Things. These these seem to be three of the most popular programs people are viewing, and they never really get old. Um, and also on Hulu. So we have 30 Rock for comedy fans, X-Files for me and JP. Love uh, X-Files. Right? For people and like Family Matters for that matter. Right, Family Matters for anyone who's into classic sitcoms. Uh, you can't go wrong. Uh, and then Mrs. America is a newer uh, political drama so it, and historical. So some Hulu suggestions for you all. Um, and you know, you don't all have to sit on the couch on your butts all day. Uh, there are other things you can do. Um, you can take an online class. Let's say you're interested in Photoshop, take a Photoshop class. Um, if you want to get a little more cultured, watch a concert through Lincoln Center Portal. That's a lot of fun. And I know personally, uh, my brother and I have been doing some Instagram uh, live shows with our music. So, and I know, uh, JP, do you want to talk about the new hobby you've been learning? Uh, yes, I actually started teaching myself how to play the piano at the suggestion of my brother, who is much more musical than me and figured I should be too. And it's actually been a lot of fun. Helped me kill some time. I definitely am still terrible, but less terrible than when I started. <laughs> I'm sure you're fine. But uh, like I said, it's a, it's a great opportunity to either get into old hobbies or find new ones. So um, take advantage of the time if you can and try to have some fun with it. Um, so thank you so much for uh, listening to our webinar today. And if you're looking to learn more information about a remote access plan and how to safely work from home, uh, you can contact us through one of these numbers on the screen and visit our website. Do you have anything to add, JP? Nope. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Appreciate All right. it. Thank you guys so much.